This is Queen the Greatest and today we are heading back to 1995 to look at Queen's fastest selling and most successful studio album to date, Made in Heaven. While the tribute concert had been the perfect occasion for fans and the band to come together and celebrate the life, the works and the dreams of one Freddie Mercury, for Brian, Roger and John there still remains some unfinished business. Of course lurking in the wings was all the material we'd done with Freddie which was unfinished and what were we going to do with this, would we manage to make an album with it? Things like Winter's Tale really came out of that uh, that sort of desperately ill stage. They were made up very much out of an awareness that Fred wasn't going to be around very long. It's all so beautiful Like a landscape painting in the sky I think I kind of dragged my heels. I think I went through a very extended grieving process, really, because I kind of didn't want to talk about Queen. I went out on my tour, uh, solo tour, and of course, all that people wanted to talk about was Queen and Freddie's death and stuff, and I, I couldn't deal with it. I just said, look, let's just talk about what's happening now. So I had a bit of sort of denial stuff going on, and. Uh, and I think I was reluctant to get back into you know, opening those boxes and dealing with, with Freddie's voice there. And it was tough to begin with. Roger made the first inroad uh, and he, he took some of the tapes down to his studio and started working on them. And um, of course that's the trigger I need because I, I hear what he's saying. I go, no, 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 you don't, don't do it like this. You've got to do it like this. You know, so my juices were working and I just dived in before I had time to think. And I took over some particular tracks. It was a monumental task. It was very weird working with Freddie's voice coming out of the speakers. But again, it was uh, a very interesting process. Because we knew that the situation was closing in on us, and uh, and it was uh, so we sort of made the most of every moment and then really enjoyed it. I think Brian and I certainly felt that we knew what Freddie would have been thinking. Uh, it, you know, we felt he was almost in the corner of the room and. Um, and sort of known each other so well for so long that we sort of, you know, thought, well, he'd like that bit, but he probably wouldn't like that bit. And yeah, so it, we sort of got there, and I was very pleased with the result. Mama, please, let me back inside. I'm very, very fond of Mother Love, and it has a little piece of I'm going back at the end, which is one of the first things that Freddie ever sang in the studio. In fact, probably the first thing, uh, Carol King song. <laughs> And I wrote to Carol King to ask her permission to use it, and she was delightful. She was so supportive, and she said she was thrilled that we would, you know, consider it important uh, to put on there. This could be heaven for everyone. The whole album is a fantasy, really, because it sounds like the four of us are there all together, having fun and making the album. But of course, for most of the time when you're listening. That's not the case, you know, it, it's, it's built to sound that way. Uh, and a, a lot of love went into that. I mean, there's tracks like I Was Born To Love You, which of course was never a Queen track, that was a solo track, which Freddie did very hurriedly. 
and he never kind of bothered about the, the backing track. So we stripped everything away and, and lovingly, cherishingly um, re-edited all his vocal, put it all together, and, and I spent months and months piecing together our bits to make it sound like we were in the studio together. Its release in November 1995, Made in Heaven raced to the top of the charts and achieved multiple platinum status around the world, going on to sell in excess of 20 million copies. Five tracks were subsequently released as singles, all of which were top 20 hits in the UK. I think it's one of our best albums, James. You know? So good experiences all connected with that album. And I love the album. I, I can put it on any time. And um, obviously. There were moments working on it when you're just listening to Freddie's voice 24 hours a day, and that can be hard. You know, you suddenly think, oh, God, he's not here. You know, why, why am I doing this? But now, having been through that, I can listen to the album, and it's just joy. I feel like it was the, the right completion. It was, a, um, it was it's the right album to finish up on. You big disgrace, kicking your can all over the place, singing, We will.